Living History, World War II Stories is told by those who were there. Flying Tigers, the famous American volunteer group, wing their way across China for the last time as volunteers. For eight months, these Chinese signs have been the only insignia of the most spectacular and efficient fighting force in aviation history. Now, wearing the emblem of their native land, the U.S. Air Force, they become regular officers with American flying forces fighting in China. A Jap flag for every plane shot down. 200 in less than four months. Leader of the volunteers, Brigadier General Cheneau, now promoted to command all American flying forces in China. Here he outlines the field of operations. With flags and souvenirs, a grateful Chinese people pay simple tribute to the airmen who have done so much to clear the skies over their embattled land. Losing no time, the new command plots the strategy of attack. By an elaborate far-flung system of Chinese listening posts, word is flashed, Japanese planes on the way, and the red ball goes up over the field. Signal for pilots to take to their ships. The Flying Tigers going into action for the first time in the uniforms of Uncle Sam. Newly assigned pilots go with the veterans. Schooled in the fighting tactics, Cheneau has proven superior. Roaring aloft, they seek the enemy. Their flying generals still at the controls. The new American Air Force over China, carrying on the tradition of the famous Flying Tigers. When we got to China, the American Volunteer Group had 14 aircraft that were in flying condition. We brought 24 with us, so we had about 40, 40 airplanes, 40 fighters, and that was the that was the beginning of the China Air Task Force. On July 4th of 1942, the American Volunteer Group ceased to exist, and Chennault of course was recommissioned as a Brigadier General. I caught a, a little a Japanese plane, and I don't know what, what, what they called it, but it, was, it wasn't it was a Zero. It was a little fighter plane that had, actually had fixed landing gears and had cowling on the, on the landing gears. And I caught that rascal, and that was the first, that was the first, uh, first Japanese uh, plane that I shot. There. Of course, General Chennault. And there were so few of us there to begin with that he got to know us all almost by personal name and even nicknames. Every afternoon, oh, around 3 o'clock or so, 2, 3 o'clock, and it was just a small group of us again, there was maybe six or eight of us, he would call us over to his office and he would sit there with a chalkboard and he would go over tactics with us. And I have to tell you, that he had instilled in us all this information that the first time I was in combat, really, I just, I just did it. I just felt like I'd been there before. I mean, it had just been ingrained in us. So he was, he was one of the most remarkable, remarkable men from that standpoint that I'd ever known. He would back you to the limit, back you to the limit. He could be tough as nails, boy, I'll tell you. Don't cross him. <laughs> I remember, you talk about, it, about the memorable, memorable uh, experiences. We came back one time from an escort mission. We were down in Canton, escorted some B-25s down. We got in a fight down over Canton, and uh, uh, we came back, and boy, we were filling, we were just full of piss and vinegar, really. So we came over the field, and we came down, and you know, we showboated, we, we hit the deck, pulled on up, you know, a couple of guys did some slow rolls away, and we came up and peeled off, you know, just like you'd see in the moving picture. General Schnauck got up, and he just praised us, boy, he said, Never had a finer bunch of guys, and just the greatest group that he'd ever had. 
and he walked over and he raised up the the curtain on the map that was there and he said since you guys like to fly close to the ground it's you like it so much he said i've got a perfect place for you and he turned us around and he sent us out on a strafing mission got his point across he got his point across because the thing we hated was strafing <laughs>